Haps was no longer in sight because the pink corridor took several sharp turns, and another tube bisected it. That tube obscured the view of the pink pipe behind the turns. But Haps couldn't have gone far. Uh, oh, Haps couldn't have gone too far. From what Aiden had seen, Haps' rubber treads didn't appear to be built for speed. Sure, why not? Jace agreed. You lead now. Aiden nodded and started crawling down the pink tube. He led Jace around the bends, then paused when he encountered six different options. Because they, were, because they were at the top of the maze, none of the tubes led upward. Three were lateral, and three headed downward. Two of those three had gradual descents meant for more crawling. One of the three was a slide, a bright blue see-through pipe canted in a sharp descent. Hey, Jay said, panting as he reached Aiden's side. You found a slide. Aiden nodded. He looked at the other tube openings. He was conflicted. He wanted to find Haps again, but the slides were fun. I know what you're thinking, Jay said. We were going to look for Haps, but what if he went down the slide too? That's a good point, Aiden turned toward the slide opening. Let's go for it. Aiden flipped onto his butt so he could wriggle into the slide feet first. He listened to Jay slither into place behind him. Hang on to my belt loop, Aiden said. Don't worry, I will, Jace replied. I haven't forgotten. Jace was talking about the second time they'd found a curling slide. About halfway down, they'd gotten split up when the slide forked and sent them in opposite directions. Um, sorry. Fortunately, they both managed to find their way to the maze's exit pretty quickly, and they'd re-entered the maze together. The next time they'd use the slide, they'd made sure they were hooked together so they ended up in the same place. Really? Aiden asked. Oh, sorry. I completely misread that. Ready? Aiden asked. Ready. Aiden pushed off the slide walls, and he and Jace whooped as they shot downward, whipping around a sharp curve, skimming through the fluorescent blue tube, or blue, blue pipe. Aiden felt cool air on his face, and for an instant, he felt free. If only he could get that instant to last forever. Even though Aiden kept busy with his hooping and juggling and yo-yoing and jump roping and he got great grades, he wasn't exactly happy. The truth was, Aiden pretty much hated his life. He often wished he could have a do-over. He knew he couldn't change his looks, but maybe if he hadn't tried to compensate for them by learning weird skills, other kids would have taken him more seriously. Maybe his parents would have paid more attention to him. Maybe. Aiden shot out of the blue pipe and landed in a dimly lit pit filled with glow-in-the-dark rubber balls. Jace tumbled over Aiden, then popped upright. The two swam through the balls through toward a neon-marked opening on the far side of the pit. As soon as they were out of the pit, they crawled into a yellow and purple striped pipe. It was one of three options, and they picked it randomly. That was a good one, Jace panted as they crawled. Yeah, Aiden agreed. He stopped at a junction with another pipe. He gestured at it. You want to go that way, or do you want to keep going straight? Jace looked at the nearby opaque pipe that led to the left. He pointed down the, the yellow and purple one. Let's keep going. I don't really like dark tubes. Aiden nodded. Yeah, I am with you on that. Aiden continued leading the way as they crawled on. As they made their way through the purple and yellow striped pipe, Aiden could see other kids crawling, climbing, and sliding through the pipes to the left of the one he and Jace were in. On the right, the pipe's walls were mostly mirrored. Occasionally, though, a break in the mirroring gave Aiden a glimpse of a huge knotted network of pipes that appeared to be completely empty of kids. After a few feet, the yellow and purple pipes started ascending slowly. They continued crawling, and they crawled, and they crawled. The pipe went up gradually for a while, and then leveled out. Aiden figured, by then, they were probably on the second story level of the pizzaplex. He thought they'd encounter a, encounter a junction leading to other pipes, but they didn't. Instead, the yellow and purple pipe continued on, now sloping downward just as gradually as it had climbed upward. The whole time they crawled, Aiden could see other kids in tubes to his left, but on his right, the pipe was either mirrored or overlooking the apparently deserted area. The pipe they were in appeared to encircle a section of the maze that no one else could get into. Aiden wasn't sure how long they crawled before they found themselves right back where they'd started. 
They recognised the spot because they could see the glow-in-the-dark balls in the pit at the base of the slide. Wow, Jay said. That was a big circle. We crawled for 14 minutes and 42 seconds. Leave it to Jay's to keep the time. Did we miss an offshoot? Aiden asked. Jay shook his head. Besides the dark pipe, I didn't see any options. Aiden cocked his head. That means the path of the maze inside the circle we just made is like its own thing. Did you see that? No one was in those pipes. I noticed that. It would be great to check it out. There has to be a way to get to it. Well, Jay said, if all those mirrors are partitions, like you think, they're blocking the way, that means there's no way we can get in. Aiden looked toward where they'd passed the black pipe opening. Unless the dark tube leads into the area. Oh, right. It might. You want to go see? Aiden asked. Sure. This time, Jace took the lead. He crawled down the yellow and purple tube until they reached the dark offshoot. There, he paused and looked over his shoulder. I'm with you, Aiden said. Jace nodded and headed into the near, nearly, dark, nearly blackened plastic pipe. The dark pipe wasn't straight. It switched left, then right, and then left every few feet like a back-and-forth trail going up a steep incline. The incline, however, wasn't steep enough to require the repeated turns. It was just as gradual as the one in the yellow and purple tube. After a few minutes of this back-and-forth, Aiden figured they were again at the second-story level. Jace stopped. Aiden peered past Jace's shoulder. The dark pipe had dead-ended. That's weird, Jace said. We've never found a dead-end before. Aiden scooted up next to Jace and put his hands against the smoky plastic. He, he peered through it. He could see the vague outlines of a convoluted matrix of pipes that was completely empty of kids. I wonder why this area is blocked off. If it was for maintenance, wouldn't there be a mirror like the others? Jace asked. Aiden nodded. You'd think. Aiden spotted a join in the plastic. He prodded at it. When the plastic didn't give, he shifted so he could kick at the seam. Maybe if he could dent it, he could grab the edge of it and pull it back. What are you doing? Jace asked. I want to see what's in this section. I mean, it has to be huge. And except for the openings blocked off by mirrors, this seems to be the only way in. But if it's sealed off here, maybe it's not safe. Aiden made a face. How unsafe could it be? We're in a pipe maze for little kids. Jace pursed his lips, as if considering the idea. Move back, Aiden said. I need some room to manoeuvre. Jace scooted backward, and Aiden got in position to kick at the partition. Leaning back on his hands, he booted the plastic with his right foot. A sharp crack echoed through the pipe, and the seam between the pipe and the partition expanded, by about an, en by about an eighth of an inch, if that. Aiden grunted and shifted again. He tried to stick his pinky into the opening. The space wasn't big enough. Aiden used the side of his fist to pound on the seam. It didn't give. He looked at Jace. Can I borrow your knife? <clears throat> Jace dug out his Swiss army knife. He fiddled with it, opening it to a file. This might be the best tool. He handed the knife to Aiden. Aiden stuck the file's tip into the seam between the pipe wall and our partition. He pushed the file in and attempted to pry the two apart. It didn't work. He switched out the file for the knife itself, and he started stabbing at the partition. Maybe he could cut it open. No, that didn't work either. The plastic was too hard. Aiden closed the knife and handed it back to Jace. He positioned himself so he could kick at the partition again. Jace backed up to give him room. Aiden pummeled the partition with both feet this time. It didn't work any better than his, than his one-foot assault hat, but maybe if he did it several times, it would weaken. Aiden braced himself and kicked again, and again. Each time he kicked, the pipe they were in shook and wavered back and forth a little, but still the partition remained in place. Aiden repositioned, trying to get more leverage for a more powerful kick. Before he could unleash the kick, Jace tapped him on the shoulder. Aiden turned to find Haps smiling at him. Hello, I'm Haps. Are you lost? Aiden felt his cheeks flush. He knew he shouldn't have been doing what he'd been doing, and he'd been caught by a robot. But still. Hi, Haps, Jace said innocently. No, we're fine. Haps' yellow eyes 
dimmed for an instant, then brightened again. His smile widened, his big teeth glowed. You are lost. I will lead you out of Freddy's fortress. Please come with me. Haps reached out an oversized foam hand and tried to take Jace's arm. Hey! Jace protested. He jerked his arm away from Haps. We're not lost, Aiden told Haps. We don't need your help. Haps ignored Aiden. You are lost. I will lead you out of Freddy's fortress. Please come with me. Aiden rolled his eyes. Yeah, we got that. Thanks, but no thanks. We're fine. I'm sorry we were messing with the wall here. We were just curious, but we're fine. We can find our way out. Haps' smile brightened to a nearly blinding level of illumination. You are lost. I will lead you out of Freddy's fortress. Please come with me. Once again, Haps reached for Jace. Aiden quickly leaned forward between Haps and his friend. He threw his shoulder into Haps. The robot skidded back a few inches. Aiden was surprised at how lightweight Haps was. Encouraged, he pushed at Haps with both hands. Go on, Aiden said. Go away, we're fine. The light in Haps' eyes blinked several times. Haps appeared to look past Aiden and Jace, as if he was appraising the, the partition. Then Haps looked directly at Aiden. You are lost. I will lead you- Shut up! Aiden shouted. He shoved Haps another time. Haps scooted away. But then he tried to churn closer again. Aiden was fed up. Aiden and Jace had liked Haps. They'd thought he was friendly. Now the robot was being as bossy as everyone else in Aiden's life. Aiden's head was suddenly filled with the voices of his parents and teachers and classmates. Do this, Aiden. Don't do that, Aiden. Hurry up, Aiden. You're not doing that right, Aiden. You're a freak, Aidon. With a shriek of frustration and rage, Aiden pushed his legs back and kicked out at Haps as hard as he could. Jace, his face red, as if he too had lost it, squirmed around so he could also kick at Haps. Together, the teens pounded on the robot with their feet battering Haps back against the side of the pipe. Haps made no effort to defend himself. His eyes remained bright, and he continued to smile. He kept smiling even when the teen's kicks cracked his plastic head and snapped Haps' arm joints, leaving his foam hands dangling. He also continued to smile when the pipe started to gyrate, swinging back and forth as if no longer anchored, and his smile went on when the pipe popped loose and plunged down into darkness. Aiden landed on his back, hard. His head whacked something solid beneath him. A sharp flash of pain radiated down his spine. He groaned, and for a few seconds, he lay still while he tried not to panic. Had he broken anything? Aiden tentatively moved his hands, then his arms and legs. Everything seemed to be working okay. Moving slowly, Aiden felt around. His upper body, sti his upper body still seemed to be in the plastic pipe. He could feel its smooth, curved sides, but he could also feel behind its sides. It appeared to have broken open when it fell. Aiden elbowed himself up into a sitting position. Jace? Aiden heard Jace groan. Are you okay, Jace? Jace coughed. Yeah, I just... He noisily sucked in air. I think I just got the wind knocked out of me. Aiden blinked and looked around. When they first started to fall, He'd felt like they were dropping into total blackness, but now he realised he could see his surroundings. The lighting was dim, but his eyes were adjusting to the shadows. He could tell they'd landed inside the area they'd been trying to reach. Well, okay, this wasn't the most efficient way to get in, but they were in. Aiden heard a scrape, and he looked over to see Jace sit up. Jace rotated his head to scan the area around them. Where's Haps? Jace asked. Aiden cringed. He'd forgotten about Haps. He looked all around too, but he didn't see the robot. Had Haps avoided the fall? Haps must not have fallen in with us, Jace said. Aiden looked up, just as he did. He heard a hiss, and he watched what appeared to be a clear partition cover the space had just fallen through. He blinked. Hey, Jace, look. He pointed at the clear partition. Jace looked up. He frowned. What is it? A partition just slid into place up there, just like it did in that other pipe. But it's not a mirror. We can see through it. Look. Jace rubbed his head, then tilted it to gaze upward. You know what? Aiden said. I think those mirrors are two-way. On the other side, it looks like a mirror. But in the closed-off area, it's like glass. See? Jace nodded. Aiden looked around. I think we're the only ones in this section. What about them? 
Jace pointed. Aiden looked in the direction of Jace's finger. Then he examined their surroundings again. It appeared as if Aiden and Jace had fallen into a junction area in the closed off web of pipes. Four corridors opened up off the junction, which was now sealed above them. Beyond the corridors, which were transparent like all the other pipes in the fortress, the main part of the maze was visible. Jace was pointing at a group of kids who appeared to be crawling past the junction just a few feet away. Obviously though, the kids couldn't see them. The two-way mirror partitions hid Jace and Aiden from view. Aiden carefully shifted onto his hands and knees. Well, we might as well explore. We have this whole area to ourselves, and it's huge. Aiden threw out a hand to indicate the separate area of the maze. Jace grinned and nodded. He rubbed at a scrape on his elbow. It's like our own town, Aiden and Jaceville. Aiden laughed. He gave Jace a playful punch. He is such a dork. Yeah, and proud of it. Jace gazed at the pipe openings around them. Which way do you want to go first? Aiden shrugged. You pick. I don't think it matters. Let's just go and see where we end up. Works for me. Aiden gestured for Jace to take the lead. Jace pointed at one of the openings, and the boys crawled into a glittery red pipe. The red pipe led to a midnight blue pipe, which led to a lime green one. Some of the pipes went up, some went down, some seemed to wind in concentric circles that returned them to where they started. They climbed up ladder pipes, they scaled climbing pipes, they crawled left and right and straight. The whole time they were exploring, they could see other kids in the pipes outside the separated area. Being apart from those kids, made Aiden feel special. He liked it a lot. At one point, when Jace paused to catch his breath, Aiden pointed at a tube that looked like it ascended gradually. Let's go that way next. We might find a hidden slide. After you, Jace said. Aiden led Jace into the ascending pipe, which was a deep golden colour. Beyond the pipe, Aiden could see the roller coaster track, and as he watched, the cars streaked past. As they continued to climb, he was able to look out at the rest of the pizza plex. The higher they got, the smaller the people down below looked. Being up here above their pint-sized forms made Aiden feel important, or at least more important than he usually felt. This perspective of the people in the pizza plex had always been available to them in the maze, but somehow it was better now that Aiden knew they were invisible to the people outside the maze. He liked the anon anonymity it gave them. The month before, Jace had asked J uh, Aiden what superhero power he'd choose if he could have one. Flying? Amazing strength? Teleporting? X-ray vision? I'd go for strength, Jace had said. I'd be the amazing little strong guy. He laughed and pointed at Aiden. Which power would you pick? Invisibility, Aiden had answered without any thought at all. If he was invisible, he wouldn't be judged for how he looked. And he could go wherever he wanted to. He'd be in control. Being hidden in this section of the maze was kind of like that. He and Jace could go wherever they wanted inside the partitioned off area. No one could see them do it. No one could stop them. Aiden and Jace passed up every offshoot they encountered as they climbed up and up in circuitous, circuitous, circuitous. Oh my god, that's, that's a really weird word. So I'm going to say circuitous path to the highest level of the maze. They figured when they reached the top, they'd stay up there and look for a slide, but it took a while to reach the top because they stuck with the slowly ascending pipe instead of opting for a ladder pipe or a pipe with climbing holds. That was okay, they were in no hurry. When the pipe they crawled through leveled out, they had the choice of three offshoots. The first one they chose meandered around on the upper level for a while before leading them in a convoluted series of twists and turns back to where they started. They tried the other offshoot and it took them on a long loop around the deserted area. Eventually though, the long loop hooked up with an intersecting pipe and that one led to a slide. At the top of the slide, which was made of burnt orange plastic, Jace pointed at the steepness of its descent. This one might go straight down, he said. Might be the fastest one we've found. Aiden grinned. Let's find out. Just as they had for the other slide, they positioned themselves in tandem and Jace hung on to Aiden's belt loop. Ready? Aiden asked. Let her rip. Aiden pushed off and the boys shot downward so fast that Aiden felt like they were falling off a cliff. For a second his heart vaulted into his mouth and adrenaline flooded his system. The adrenaline ushered a chilling thought into Aiden's brain. What if this section wasn't finished? What would be at the bottom of the slide? 
Thankfully, Aiden didn't have long to fret about this idea. The slide dropped them in a flash, but in the last instant, the slide levelled out and they slipped off it, skidding across the slick, curved bottom of a clear plastic pipe that extended across the bottom floor of the pizzaplex. When their momentum ran out, they came to a stop at the juncture of two other pipes. Wow, Jace breathed. That was a rush. Aiden nodded. He shifted to his knees. As he did, his stomach growled. He looked at his watch. We've been in here for almost two hours, Jace. No wonder I'm hungry. It's been almost four hours since we ate that pizza. Jace checked his own watch. You're right. He dug in the pocket of his jeans, and he pulled out one of the fancy dark chocolate and macadamia candy bars he liked. One half? Aiden looked at the crumbled bar. It wasn't exactly appetising, but he nodded. Thanks. Aiden got into a cross-legged position next to Jace, who was sitting with his legs splayed where he'd ended up after the slide. The two boys sat side by side in the pipe, eating the mostly melted chocolate and crunchy nuts. Through the two-way mirror, they could see into the dining area, which was full of happy families, scarfing down pizzas and swilling soda. Trying to unstick part of a nut from his back teeth, Aiden realised how thirsty he was. Aiden fer fervently wished they could get to the dining area so they could have a soda and order another pizza. As soon as he had had that thought, Another thought tumbled into his head. This one wasn't as nice as thinking about pizza and soda. This thought, Aiden realised, was a disturbing cousin to the one he'd had on the slide. In fact, it was a thought that had been nagging him ever since he'd wondered what might be at the bottom of the slide. When Aiden had realised this part of the maze might not be finished, and he was glad he was wrong about that, another thought had popped into his head. What if this part of the maze was effectively closed off from the rest of it? So much so that they couldn't get out. Jace? Aiden said, turning to look at his friend. Yeah? Jace licked chocolate off his fingers. I think we might want to start looking for a way out of this section. Jace got up on his hands and knees. Oh, I've been kind of looking already. Actually, I thought the slide might take us out, but I figured the way out has to be on the bottom of the maze or the top. We pretty much went entirely around the middle of it when we found it. True. But the slide didn't do it. You think? Aiden winked at his friend. Jace rolled his eyes. I'm thirsty. Let's find a way out. Aiden got on his hands and knees. He winced. Not only was his back still, store, still sore from the fall, his knees were starting to protest all the crawling. Jace groaned when he got to his knees, too. Sure wish we had some knee pads. Aiden laughed. Yeah, that would be nice. He took a deep breath. Any ideas of how to find an exit? You're the thinker, Jay said. What do you think we should do? Aiden considered their alternatives. Finally, he said, let's try to be systematic. Explore every main pipe and try each offshoot one by one. What do you think? Jace gazed out at the enclosure of entwined pipes. This place is big, but it's not that big. We should be able to find the way out if we do that. Aiden couldn't miss the doubt in Jace's voice. Jace clearly wasn't sure he believed what he was saying. Aiden understood. He had similar concerns. If this part of the maze was deserted, that must mean it was sealed off. And if it was sealed off, that probably meant it had no exit. But maybe Aiden was wrong. You can lead, Jace said. Your memory is better than mine. You can keep track of where we've been and where we haven't been. Aiden nodded and set off ahead of Jace. Envisioning everywhere they'd explored so far, he led Jace to the left, heading toward a pipe they hadn't yet tried. From there, he attempted to make their trek through the pipes as sequential as possible, ticking off the sections on a mental checklist as they went. Unfortunately, Aiden wasn't wrong. No matter how many turns, ascents and descents they made, they couldn't find a way out of the partitioned off area. It was Jace who admitted defeat first. When they'd retraced their path along a main pipe for the second time, Jace said, Hold up. Aiden stopped and looked at his friend. Jace sat back on his butt. We're trapped in here, aren't we? Aiden got off his knees and sat too. He leaned against the curved wall of the pipe. He let his head drop against the plastic. Aiden gazed through the other side of the pipe. Beyond it, he could see a little girl riding a Freddy replica on the carousel. The little girl's head was thrown back, even though Aiden couldn't hear her. 
He knew she was laughing. Aiden? Aiden shifted his gaze to Jace. He noticed that a vein at Jace's temple was throbbing at a strobe-like pace. Aiden realised his heart was matching the rhythm. They were both scared. Yeah, Jace. I think we're trapped. Aiden could hear Jace's breathing quicken. The vein pulsed even faster. Jace's eyes filled with tears. He quickly wiped his face with the back of his hand. Aiden wanted to tell Jace it was okay if he wanted to cry because Aiden wanted to cry too, but he couldn't get his mouth to work. Aiden cleared his throat and licked his lips. He opened his mouth, but before he could speak, a muffled scratching sound stopped him. Jace inhaled sharply and spun around to look toward the sound. What was that? Aiden frowned and shook his head. Both he and Jace cocked their heads, listening intently. At first, they heard nothing, but then a distant scrape was followed by a faint crackle of static. Both boys tensed. Neither made a sound. For several more seconds, they listened. Then Jace exhaled. Aiden realised he'd been holding his breath too. He let it out. Jace glanced over at Aiden. Do we want to think about what that was? Aiden shook his head. Better to think about how to get out of here. Jace nodded. He rubbed his face. Okay, let's think this through. Okay. We've been looking for an exit, and we haven't found one. Thank you, Mr. Obvious. Jace winced. Sorry, Jace. I'm not at my best. I get it. Several seconds of silence passed. Finally, Aiden encouraged Jace to continue. Go on. You sounded like you were leading up to an idea. Jace sighed. Well, it's not a very good one. A not very good one is better than none at all. And I've got nothing. Jace bit his lower lip. Then he leaned forward. Okay. So we know there's an opening on the second level, where we were trying to get through that partition. But if we can find our way back there, and we work at that seam some more, that partition might have weakened when the pipe fell. We weren't able to pry it open from the other side, but maybe we could from this side. Aiden frowned. But the pipe on the other side of that seam is what fell. We'd have nowhere to go from there even if we did get through the partition. Jay shook his head. The part of the pipe that fell was only three feet or so long. If we could get the partition loose, we could use it as a bridge to cross that opening. Well, we might be able to pry the partition open, but what if we can't get it completely loose? Aiden asked. Jace twisted his mouth. Well, we might be able to swing ourselves across, like like, like hand, hang from the pipe on one side and then swing over to the other, like on the bars in gym class. Aiden thought about the idea. It was pretty weak. He and Jace were ridiculously unathletic, and even if they were strong and coordinated, broken climbing pipes were different from gymnastic bars. But did Aiden have anything better? Before Aiden could respond, Jace gave Aiden a weak grin as he pulled out his Swiss army knife, and I still have my mighty sword. Aiden laughed. He painfully returned it to his returned to his knees. Okay, Sir Jace, let's do this. Lead on. Jace tried to keep his grin in place as he also returned to his knees. Aiden pretended the grin was effective, and he pretended he didn't hear Jace's occasional whimpers as Jace led them quickly back to the spot Aiden had tried to break through before they had fallen into the area. Although getting to the right place wasn't a problem, finding the seam took a little effort. It was, after all, just the narrowest of slits in the plastic along one short section of pipe. Both Aiden and Jace had to feel their way along the wall of the pipe to find it. As soon as they located the seam, Jace pulled out his knife. Flipping out the main blade, he began soaring along the scant opening that Aiden had created earlier. Aiden could do nothing but watch. He had no knife of his own. After a few minutes, Jace dropped his hand. It's not working! He wiped his eyes again. Aiden leaned past Jace's shoulder to examine the opening. Then he leaned closer still. His heart did a little stutter, step of hope. Actually, yeah it is, he said. Look! Aiden pointed to a series of fine stress fractures along the opening. Whether Jace had made them with his knife or they'd been created when the pipe collapsed, Aiden didn't know. He did, however, think, or hope, that the stress fractures might have weakened the joint enough that he might be able to kick the partition free. When Jace spotted the, the stress fractures, his eyes lit up. 
Do you think he didn't finish the thought? Back up. My legs are stronger. I'll do the kicking. Jace nodded and scooted out of the way. Aiden took up position on his butt, propped forward on his hands. Uh, sorry, propped backward on his hands. I don't know why I keep messing up. He pulled in his legs as tight to his body as he uh, could get them so he could coil up with as much power as possible. Then he thrust his feet out hard and fast. Crack! The plastic protested the impact, but it held. Aiden didn't care. He pulled his knees in and he kicked out again and again. Breathing hard, Aiden paused after the third kick. He sat forward and looked at the seam. The cracks extended further from the opening. He was getting somewhere. He set up to kick some more. On the sixth kick, the plastic gave in. The partition popped loose at the seam, and it swung open like a miniature doorway. Behind Aiden, Jace shouted, Yes! Aiden grinned. Panting, he sat forward and started to grasp the partition. Surely, they'd be able to free it from the other side of the opening too. Help me, Aiden said. Jace scooted up beside Aiden. He started to reach for the plastic. Then he stopped. His hand dropped. He made a little choking sound in his throat. Aiden turned to look at Jace. What's wrong? Jace pointed. Aiden immediately saw what Jace had already seen. Although Jace had been right at the gap that the gap between the partition and the intact pipe was small enough to get across, there was an insurmountable problem on the other side. One of the two-way mirror partitions had been put into place on the far side of the gap. There was no way past that. Aiden collapsed onto his back. Utterly defeated, Jace slumped next to him. Sorry, Aiden, Jace said. It was a dumb idea. Aiden shook his head. No, it was... He stopped. From further along the pipe, they were in... A whirring sound was coming with their way. Aiden sat up. Is that Haps? He asked. <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, Jace cocked his head and listened. The whirring sound was interspersed with a thud and a scrape. If it is... He doesn't sound the way he normally sounds. Aiden stared down the pipe. Jace was right. The robot sounded clunky, like he was damaged. The robot's noisy approach got louder. The boys gazed down the length of the tube, waiting. Aiden realised he was holding his breath, and he quietly let it out. Beside him, Jace was trembling and breathing in sharp gasps. Why was Jace afraid? Wasn't Hap's program to help kids in the maze? Broken or not, couldn't he get them out? Shouldn't they have been eager to see Haps? Jace got to his knees and aimed himself in the opposite direction from Haps' approach. We need to get out of here, Aiden, he whispered. His words came out so fast they ran together. It took Aiden a second to process what Jace said. In that second, the danger that Jace had intuited uh, came clear. From around a bend in the pipe just a few feet away, Haps appeared, and he did not look happy. His face cracked one of his eyes dark, and the yellow security light on top of his head sheared away. Haps' signature smile was in place. The smile, however, was incomplete. Half of his glowing teeth were gone, and his up-curved mouth had been shattered on one side. This turned into his cheerful expression into a malevolent sneer. Even though Haps' metal torso appeared to be unscathed, the robot no longer looked friendly. As soon as Haps spotted the boys, he spoke, sort of. His programming had obviously been damaged because only a portion of his usual spiel came through. What he said was, Lost. Out. With me. The words had staticky gaps separating them, and they weren't spoken in Haps' usual sprightly tone. Haps' high-pitched voice had dropped a couple octaves. His tones were low and guttural. They sounded threatening. Oh, okay, I, I said it completely wrong then. <laughs> it wasn't Haps' words that kicked the boys into gear, though. It was his hands. Jay shouted, Come on! As he began crawling madly away from Haps. Aiden didn't hesitate. He crawled as fast as he could in Jace's wake. Behind the boys, Haps clattered and scraped his way along. Each scrape made Aiden flinch. His whole body was wound into a knot of tense terror. As Aiden and Jace scrabbled through the tube, Aiden thought about the foam hands that had always made Haps look so harmless and helpful. Those hands were gone. Probably ripped free when the pipe fell, the foam was no longer there to conceal the metallic workings they'd covered. Without the foam, the robot's spiky metal pincers were exposed. But in the few seconds Aiden had looked at Haps, he realised the missing foam hands weren't what made the robot a threat. 
the pincers had been sheared off as well. Instead of mechanisms that could grip and be useful, Haps now had met, uh, lethal metal shards at the end of his arms. His arm joints were damaged as well, so each articulation was jagged. His friendly looking arms had morphed into threatening metal ex extensions protruding from his torso, and he was flailing the menacing sharp edges as the extension stabbed and slashed at the pipe walls he passed. This way, Jay shouted. He took a left into a descending tube. Before Aiden pushed off to scoot down after Jace, he turned to check on Haps. The mangled robot was rolling toward him, about 15 feet away. Thankfully, Haps wasn't moving at his full speed. Aiden realised this was because one of Haps's treads was hanging partially off its runner, and the other rolling track was askew. This was causing Haps to lurch consistently to his right. The other track was working to put Haps back in the direction Haps wanted to go but the constant oppositional yank and pull made for much slower progress than the robot should have been capable of. Slower, though, was a relative term. In just the few seconds that Aiden spent examining Haps's progress, Haps had almost managed to get within arm's reach of Aiden. Aiden quickly flipped from his knees onto his butt. Pushing off with his hands, he propelled himself down the sloping pipe, wishing as he did that the slope was, sleep was steeper. Although the pipe descended like a slide, it was an anemic slide, probably intended for the smaller kids who were afraid of the steep, fast slides. Ahead of Aiden, Jace was also on his butt, his legs straight out in front of him. He was using his hands to push off the bottom of the pipe, attempting to scoot faster than gravity alone allowed. Aiden mimicked Jace's movements. Behind him, a metallic thunk made a spot between Aiden's uh, shoulder blades tingle. His imagination provided him with a frighteningly clear image of Haps's honed metal spearing at Aiden in the back. Aiden was afraid the downward cant of the pipe would give Haps more speed than Jace and Aiden were managing. It didn't help that Haps was now repeating the same thing he'd said when they'd first spotted him a few minutes before. Lost out with me, Haps kept saying. Unnerving crackling surrounded each word. Aiden realised he'd been more in his head than in the pipe when his feet suddenly encountered Jace's butt. Forcing himself not to think about the pursuing robot, Aiden focused on his friend and realised that Jace was scrambling onto his knees. The descending tube had ended. I see a ladder pipe, Jace shouted. He's slower on the ladders. Come on. Good thinking, Aiden said as he too repositioned himself onto his knees. Sparing a glance behind him, still convinced that impalement was a likely possibility at any second, Aiden gasped. He was right. The end of Haps's cutting edge hands were a couple feet from Aiden's side. Aiden yelped, yet lunged after Jace, and groped for the highest rung on the ladder he could reach. He pulled his legs up as fast as he could and scrabbled up the ladder behind Jace, who was climbing like a monkey with, the tail its, with its tail on fire. The ladder wasn't long, maybe 20 feet at the most. When Aiden reached the top of it, he found Jace frowning at the two pipe openings available to them. Both of them appeared to be level pipes. Lost out with me. Haps's garbled words echoed up from the bottom of the ladder pipe. Aiden pulled his legs off the ladder and looked down. He exhaled in relief. Haps was still at the bottom of the ladder because Haps had always used his foam hands to grip the rungs and those foam hands were missing. The robot could only swipe at the rungs. His swipes were carving at the rungs cutting them away from the pipe walls. Apparently aware that his hands weren't working right, Haps thrust out his third limb, the telescoping extender that came from his inside, or from his middle. He tried to use it to grab onto one of the rungs he cut up, but the extender wasn't functioning either, at least not as anything that could grip. It too had been damaged, and it looked more like a serrated knife than a cleaning tool. The additional deadly we weapon wasn't good, Aiden thought but at least Haps didn't have a way to climb up after the boys. Which way do you think? Jace asked. Aiden turned and looked at Jace's tight red face. Jace's face was smeared with tear tracks. Aiden pretended not to notice. I have no idea. It may not matter. If we stay on this level, we might be okay. Look, Aiden pointed at Haps, who was trying and failing to grab a ladder rung. Jace hesitated, clearly not wanting to move in even an inch closer to where Haps was. Then he creeped up next to Aiden and looked down the ladder pipe. Aiden felt Jace's taut muscles loosen, slightly, 
and he heard Jace exhale. Aiden started to turn to examine the two pipes leaning away from the top of the ladder pipe, but Jace grabbed his arm. Aiden turned back. Aiden, look! Aiden glanced at Jace, who was still staring intently at the bottom of the ladder pipe. Aiden shifted his gaze in that direction, just in time to watch one of the two-way mirrored safety panels sliding into place above Haps. A swish and a click, and Haps was no longer in view. Jace and Aiden were now looking at reflections of themselves in the mirrored surface of a safety door. In spite of the situation, Aiden couldn't help but notice neither he nor Jace were looking their best. Aiden sat back on his heels and tried to smooth his hair, which he now knew was even more crazed than usual. He wiped the slick sheen of sweat from his dirty face, careful to avoid his swollen eye. The area around it was now deep, dark and purple. Jace too scrubbed at his face. He'd probably seen the tear tracks on his cheeks. I'm not sure if that partition is a good thing or a bad thing, he said. Aiden nodded. I get you. On the one hand, Haps can't climb up here after us. On the other hand, if those safety doors are closing off wherever he's been, we're going to have less and less room to manoeuvre. I didn't think much about it at the time. I was too busy thinking about getting away. But the pipe behind Haps was pretty torn up. He must be damaging things right and left. Jace frowned and nodded. So what do we do? Aiden had no idea. He looked at the two pipe openings. Which one would keep them away from Haps? Jace nudged Aiden. You have a better memory than I do. Can you remember any of the layout here? I've been trying to picture it in my head, but it's kind of a blur. Give me a second to think. Jace nodded and closed his eyes as if he could make the problem disappear by not seeing it. Aiden leaned back against the pipe wall, but instead of thinking about the maze's layout, he looked through the two-way mirror that separated them from the rest of the pizza plex. They were so close to help. Below them, just be beyond the pipe they were in, two young boys were being strapped into the giant swings. Both boys were redheads, probably brothers. They had identical grins. They were having so much fun. Past them, Aiden could see the bumper car zipping this way and that. Although the scene was blurred because of the layers of cu coloured plastic separating the tubes from the bumper car arena, Aiden was pretty sure Nora and her friends were in four of the cars. They were ramming several cars, driven by guys in le le letter jackets? Oh, letter jackets, yeah. I thought maybe it was a misspelling of leather. Um, it was... Wait. Yeah, it was a whole other world. Not just the bumper cars, but the social circle that enveloped kids like Nora and her friends. Aiden had always wondered what it would be like to have a place in a network like that. Aiden? Aiden pulled his gaze from the distant bumper cars. He looked at Jace. Jace too was now gazing at the kids having fun outside the maze. Suddenly Jace got up on his knees, faced the pipe's wall, and started pounding on the side of the pipe. Help! he screamed. Help us! We're stuck in here! Hey! Help! Jace's panic was infectious. Aiden started pounding on the plastic too. Help! he bellowed at the top of his lungs. We're in here! Help us! Aiden wasn't sure how long they hammered at the plastic with their fists and shouted as loud as they could. It could have been seconds or hours. It was probably at least a few minutes, because when Aiden's last help broke into a rasp, he realised his, so his throat was on fire. His fists throbbed. Aiden put his head in his hands. Jace was still shouting, but his voice was getting hoarse. His strikes on the plastic were, re were weakening. Aiden touched Jace's arm. Jace whipped around. Spittle dripped from the sides of his mouth. His face was red from exertion. They can't hear us, Aiden said. Too much sound muffling in here, and too much noise out there. Jace wiped his mouth. He opened it like he was going to argue, but then he exhaled loudly. I know. Flopping back on his butt, Jace looked away from Aiden. He was trying to pull himself together. <coughs> Apologies. Uh, they sat in silence for a few seconds. Finally, Jace cleared his throat. He turned to face Aiden. Have you figured it out? Aiden sighed. He hadn't figured anything out. He'd been too busy pointlessly yelling his head off. Yes, he remembered the maze's layout pretty well, but that didn't do them a lot of good. He shrugged and pointed at one of the pipes. I think if we take the left pipe here, it'll keep us on this level. He dropped his hand. But the trouble is, what good does that do us? Are we just going to crawl back and forth until our knees are bloody? It's not like there's a way out up here. And he gestured at the kids and adults outside the maze. 
They can't see us or hear us. I'm wondering if we should just stay here. Maybe someone will come looking for us. Like who? Chase's question was almost whispered, as if he had barely had the strength to ask it. Our parents? His mouth twisted. Good point. Aiden tried to think of something helpful to say. Chase beat him to it. Actually, maybe you're right. Maybe the fast more entertainment people, you know, workers, will find us. Wouldn't they send someone in to repair the pipes? Eventually. Jace was silent. He stared at his sneakers. Eventually. He repeated. His face was pale. Aiden nodded. He had a feeling his face was as pale as Jace's. Aiden pressed his hands against the pale blue plastic beneath them. I don't think we should stay here. Haps may not be able to climb ladders, but all he has to do is find an ascending pipe, and he'll get up to this level eventually. If we stay here, he could box us in. Jace nodded. I remember a couple of junctions where there were, like, at least four offshoots. If we got to one of those, we could rest and think some more. We'd have multiple escape routes if Haps finds us. Good idea. Aiden used his chin to gesture at the left pipe opening. I think that one of uh, that one will get us to one of those junctions. Jace nodded. Aiden cringed as he pushed himself up onto his knees. When Jace didn't move, Aiden turned to look at his friend. Jace stared down at the bumper cars. I wish we'd taken out our frustration with the cars instead of coming in here. Yeah, you and me both. Aiden crawled toward the left pipe opening. He assumed Jace would follow him, which he did. The pipe they entered went straight for 50 feet or so, but then it took a big gradual turn and started heading downward. Aiden didn't want to go down, so he quickly looked for an alternative route. When he spotted one, he turned that way, but he was brought up short in just a couple feet. They were blocked by one of the two-way mirror safety barriers. Aiden gestured at the barrier. I don't remember that being here when we passed here by here earlier. He looked around. I remember this pipe. It was a distinctive pipe, aqua with multicolored polka dots. Jace nodded. I do too. And no, that wasn't here. Aiden frowned. That means Haps was close by. He damaged more tubes and they were closed off. That's not good. Aiden looked toward another offshoot. We can go this way, but I'm pretty sure it goes to the part of the maze that isn't connected to the main conduits. If we can't get to a main conduit, our options are going to be limited. Yeah, I figured that. Jace looked down the offshoot. Want to try it anyway? We might still be able to find a junction where we can watch for haps. Jace licked his lips. I sure wish I had some water. Me too. Yeah, so do I. <coughs> Sorry, I keep coughing because I haven't had water. <laughs> I need to stop in a second. Um, in inside. Yeah, we might as well go that way. He pointed at the offshoot and started crawling in that direction. You with me? Jace nodded. Aiden continued on. He could hear Jace shuffle close behind. Um, one reason I am not as fond of this story is because I feel like a lot of this is filler. Like, I guess you could say it's build up, but honestly, it just feels like I'm reading the same stuff over and over again. Like, oh my god, there's junctions here, there's junctions there, they go up this pipe, they go down the slide, blah blah blah. Like, I want to get to the good part, um, but it's taken a while. So that's one reason I kind of, um, I, I find this one of the weakest of the Tales from the Peterplex story so far. But it does get good eventually, so, so stay with me. 